Mario. Yes, sir. The Bills are in first place in the AFC East. Tell me something they I are, don't know. They are seven and two. Yep. And I think they're going to win every single game left on the schedule. <laughs> yeah. You ready to go down this rabbit hole with me, buddy? Because I'm thinking 14 and two is like right there. Might Minus. be the white claws. <laughs> it's almost. All right, Mario, here's the deal. The Bills just mollywopped Seattle. Mollywopped, they, good word, good word. Yeah, I know, right? Uh, they are, uh, we're looking at Arizona uh, this upcoming week. Uh, don't get me wrong, Arizona's a tall task, right? You got the Chargers uh, after that, but you do have the bye week in between there. Um, that bye week is perfect for the Bills right now, yes. right? Because you're going you're gonna to gear up. It's a perfect spot uh, to run out the rest of the season. And to be honest with you, after the Cardinals game, I don't see a game that they can lose. And I understand they got Pittsburgh there, right? I, I understand they have Pittsburgh, but Pittsburgh is in such a lead in that division. Yes. At some point, Pittsburgh's going to look at it and say, okay, we let's just, uh, let's just relax a little bit here, right? At some point, uh, you, they're going to take their foot off the gas, right? Because if you're Buffalo, you're looking up at Pittsburgh for the for that buy in the playoffs. You got to beat Pittsburgh. So I believe Pittsburgh will show up for this game because by the time we get to the Pittsburgh game, it's going to be the Bills versus Pittsburgh for that first round buy in the playoffs. Like I really feel that's the way it's going to absolutely. play out. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. I better. absolutely believe that's the way it's going to play out. Just to let you know, the Steelers they have the Bengals and the Jaguars and the okay. Ravens. So wait, well the Ravens. And the Ravens I'm just saying, are, I'm saying they, have, they have Bengals. I'm sorry. They have the Bengals, the Jags, the Ravens, and the Reds, uh, the Washington football team okay. for the Bills. So they have two division games, obviously, mm-hmm. they're going to be focused on. You, and you have the Jags and the Washington football team, which they should win. So mm-hmm. depending on tiebreakers, that could, like you said, that could be a huge game for the Buffalo Bills. Right. Right. But as you move through after the Steelers, then you have the Broncos, you have the Patriots. And then you have the Dolphins to close the season out. Like, I really don't see a game on this schedule. There's a couple games where I'm like, okay, I'm a little nervous about that one. Arizona, Pittsburgh are it for me. The 49ers, not scared of them anymore, right? I'm just not. They look like a very beatable football team. They are Jekyll and Hyde, man. They very much so, right? And at the beginning of the season, I 100% said the Bills were going to lose that 49ers game. With as much as they involve the backs and as bad as this run defense has has been, you do get worried about that. But, um, I mean, they are are not a great – they are not a great football team. They they are held together by scheme and bubblegum. That is it. Scheme and bubblegum. Scheme and bubblegum. Um, so let's walk through a little bit and, and cause I think the bills can get to 14 and two. I really do, but I need you to tell me whether I'm absolutely insane. What did you do with Paul? What? What did you do with Paul? Where is he? 14 and two. <laughs> Optimism. 14 and two. Listen, I didn't say Brian Dable was going to lead him to victory. That is optimistic. Paul, I'm being objective. Paul saying the bills could walk through the rest of the schedule and really end up 14 and two at the end of it. I'd rather see Charlie Steiner holding a lamp saying, follow me to freedom. <laughs> follow me. Follow me to freedom. I miss, uh, I miss those. I miss those early, you know, late nineties, early 2000s. Oh, uh, nobody watches TV anymore. That's crazy. Nope. Um, okay. So, let me try to walk through you because um, this is probably the last time I will cling to my preseason prediction. Nine and seven? Yes. It's the last time I'm going to mention it. It's been mentioned on many lives. I can't do it anymore. This team is too good. This team is too good. They, they have already taken care of many pieces of the gauntlet where I thought they would have lost. Mm-hmm. Um, the two pieces, which I was sure they were going to lose, Tennessee and Kansas City, yeah. But then I also thought they were going to lose to the Seahawks. I thought they were going to lose to the Cardinals. They haven't played them yet. And the Patriots. And I thought they were going to split with the Jets. The Jets just had a fire sale of everybody. Uh, I'm not sure. I'm not sure the Jets would win the Big 12 at this point. You know, it's... <laughs> and my apologies to Ryan over at Jets Talk 24-7, a good friend of the show. Uh, yeah. But it's it's not looking good. Um, no. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to jump off that bandwagon. However, 
looking at the schedule, just to just to give everyone a preview, obviously they play the Cardinals next week, then they have a bye week, then the Chargers, Niners, Steelers, Broncos, Patriots, and Dolphins. Two division games, one, two, three, four, five conference games. Those are the big dogs. So if you're going to lose any of those, you can lose to the Niners, you can lose to the Cardinals. And Mario, what are you talking about? You can lose to those guys. Yes. Because mm-hmm. taking care of your division and then taking care of your conference are of the utmost importance for any team. Mm-hmm. Why do you think that they IR'd Milano with two NFC games and a bye week mm-hmm. to get him ready? Okay. All right. That being said, uh, I will agree with you on your prediction at the beginning of the season. You said the Cardinals were going to win the NFC West. I think yeah. they are a very tough team. I do not have the Bills winning that game. Um, okay. I think it's going to be a very tough test for them. However, today kind of threw a little bit of a, or today, or you know, the, the Seahawks game threw a little bit of a wrinkle into that because if you could put up that many points, but the, the little caveat in there is Russell Wilson has not had four turnovers in a game since September of, of 2018. Right. So yeah. that was the only time in his career he ever had four turnovers, mm-hmm. other right. than when they played the Bills. So. Right. That is something that you can't guarantee and bank on every week with four turnovers, and they still only beat the Seahawks by 10. Well, yeah, and and if you remove that last turnover, which happened at the very end of the game, the Bills came all the way with two field goals and a touchdown, right? Which, don't get me wrong, thrilled they scored points off of every turnover, but with a team that's 6-1, and you know, that scored 240 points this season, like you got – you it's – you're in for a big one, yes. right? Like yeah. they, they're not going to stop. They're going to keep scoring points. Yeah. And I think that's one of the big differentiators between Seattle and the Cardinals, which I find so fascinating because they're in the same division. Now, again, I predicted Arizona is going to, you know, is going to win that division. Um, the bills now just knocked Seattle down a little bit, yep. right? Because yep. now Seattle's in at two losses. Arizona walking into when we record, this is only at two losses at the time. Um, but the fact remains that, Arizona's only allowed 146 points uh, up until this last Sunday, which if you look at the rest of the NFC, there's not a single team lower than that. That's it. They have allowed the least number of points of any team in the A in the NFC, which is madness to me. And I I think their defense gets underplayed. And that's why that game concerns me a little bit. Right. Like if I'm looking at it, I'm not worried about the, the Arizona offense. I'm, I'm worried about that Arizona defense, right? The way you beat the Bills is not uh, by outscoring them. It's by keeping them off the board. Because the Bills have proven that they could score a lot of points, but they it's a Jekyll and Hyde season. They score a plenty of points or they score 10, right? Like it's, that's what it's felt like at least. I mean. Yeah. I mean, well, prior to this game, they were only scoring ba- barely 20 points a game. Mm-hmm. You know, the, the right. previous four the previous four weeks, the Buffalo Bills only scored more than 20 points once, and they had a two-and-two two split prior to the Seattle game. Right. And then they just decided, okay, wait, you have the worst pass defense in the league that's giving up 360 yards a game passing? Oh, that's what we're yeah. going to do. Thanks. Yeah, 40 bomb, right? Yeah. Like, oh, yeah. just hang a 40 bomb. Yeah, but you got guys on that team, such as Patrick Peterson, who's always effective, Isaiah Simmons, the first-round pick, Jordan Phillips, mm-hmm. former Buffalo Bill. Uh, Lake, uh, Lakey Fotu, who's a defensive tackle on, on there, who's going to be, he's going to say hello to Feliciano a few times. In that <laughs> uh, former first round pick Hassan Reddick. You know, they have, yeah. you know, Buda Baker, their nickelback. They have guys yeah. on that defense that can make life very, very difficult for Josh mm-hmm. Allen in this offense. Sure can. And uh, to the tune of, they've been holding teams down and that's, yep. it's going to be a completely different um, dynamic when the, when the bills play the Cardinals, but that's a game you can lose, Mike. Like I, I'm, I'm not, I'm not trying to be, um, a, a, you know, Debbie Downer for the Buffalo Bills fans who are watching this. But if you're gonna lose a game, let it be the NFC games. Let it be the mm-hmm. NFC games because you don't want right. to drop team to teams in your conference. If you're right. trying to get that first round by, um, we don't know the status of Big Ben. You know, they mm-hmm. they could lose a few games. They can go on a streak run. You know, uh, Kansas City at, at the recording of this, they're eight and one. Um, mm-hmm. Tennessee six and two. They hold the tiebreaker with the Bills. So, mm-hmm. um, you, you, and so does uh, the Kansas City. So you got to think right. the Kansas City seems like the runaway favorite. If you don't think you're going to get there, um, mm-hmm. yeah, last few weeks you're going to rest some guys. You're going to try to you know you're going to have the, the <laughs> about to say this. You're going to have the AFC East locked up. Oh my God! <laughs> like when when it's, 1995 was that the last time? <laughs> going through the schedule, obviously I have the Bills. Losing to the Cardinals, so they're seven mm-hmm. and three. 
Yep. Going into the bye week. Not bad. Not bad. Not bad at all. Not hate. Ten games in the year, you won seven of them? Eh, that's fine. Mm-hmm. How, do you, how do you see the Chargers? Uh, Chargers in 40, you said you could see them winning. I could see them winning out. Let me just put it that way. But I think there's going to be a couple hiccups on the way. Yeah. it's. I mean, the Chargers with Justin Herbert um, under center uh, are a much um, – What's the best way for me to phrase this? Potent. They're a very, they're a very unfortunate team because <laughs> he's out there and they're doing a great job since he took over, right? Yes. Really, they're yes. scoring enough points to win football games, but that that defense is just hemorrhaging points. You know, like they're just yeah. they're hemorrhaging. And I thought points. that was going to be a really really tough test for the Buffalo's in that yeah, second. Yeah, agreed. There, so agreed. Yeah, it's um, you know, it, I think Buffalo can can run away with the Chargers. Um, you know, this defense, uh, going against a rookie quarterback. And I guess that's kind of another thing we can look at is, you know, if you're looking at the quarterbacks that this team has to face walking through the rest of it, it's, this is not an all-star cast, right? You're looking at Kyler Murray. Okay. Dangerous, right? Justin Herbert. I think you could confuse him at this point in his career. Then you're going, what Nick Mullins, uh, with the 49ers. If he's still playing, if Garoppolo is not bad, Garoppolo doesn't scare me either. Uh, maybe big Ben, maybe Mason Rudolph. Uh, Drew Locke, whoever the hell's starting for the Patriots in the second last game of the season. And then Tua Tug of Lilo, a Tua Tug of Liloa, who, who his first NFL game didn't throw for a hundred yards. Like you look at the quarterbacks that this team has to face. 14 and two is there. It is there for you. It is. It is. And, and how about this as a nice little caveat? They lost to Kansas city. Mm-hmm. True. They yep. lost. Um, you have them losing to Arizona. Who in their right mind? Well, I'm just saying. Yeah. I'm just saying. You know, that's the beginning of the year. I'm just going back to the beginning yep. of the year. I mean, I had a nine and seven at the beginning of the year but for me. Yep. Yeah, I'm. I'm <laughs> do not yep. listen to me ever. Point being is this: um, who had them going to both West yep. divisions, going six and two against those yep. divisions? That's right. amazing. Mm-hmm. That's amazing. That tells you the growth and the maturity of this team. Um, mm-hmm. Would you? Would you? Before we, you know. Before we kind of wrap this schedule stuff, do, do the Bills kind of strike you as Jekyll and Hyde? Because Jekyll and yeah. Hyde, to me, involves wins and losses. To me, the Buffalo Bills, the last two weeks, they showed you two different facets, especially of their offense. Mm-hmm. We well, right. can run the ball if you have a poor run defense. We mm-hmm. can pass the ball if you have a horrible pass defense. Right. That, to me, is not a Jekyll and Hyde. Would you classify them as a Jekyll and Hyde? Because they were you know, able to get wins those two games. I still do because um... – this team is very rife with turnover possibilities, right? And mm. I guess that's kind of where I th- – that's where I walk into that Jekyll and Hyde. As soon as I see uh, Allen trying to buy time in the pocket, I'm, I start getting a little nervous. Even even though he's done a great job this season, yes. right? Really does limit turnovers. The more time he buys in the pocket, uh, even when he's out on the run, I, the whole time I'm like, oh, my God, just put two hands on the football. Please, for the love of God, just don't put two hands on the football. And then when he starts running outside the pocket, like he threw a great pass to Beasley in the Seattle game right along the right sideline. But that was a that was a dangerous pass. Right. Mm-hmm. And as they walk into games where they need to depend on um, where the game's a little bit tighter in the Seattle game, they got out to a really nice lead early. I think it, they allowed them to take some pressure, you know, take their foot off, not the gas, but they didn't, Allen didn't feel pressured to have to take any chances. Mm-hmm. Um, I think when you put Allen in the, in the position where he has to take a couple of chances, it's going to burn you still. Right. Um, I, I just don't think he's at a point where he plays mistake free football. Um, you know, and protects the football just yet. So that's where I get a little nervous here. And that's where, and I talk about Jekyll and Hyde it's we've, we've run the ball effectively for one game. I, yeah. I don't consider that to be, you know, I, I, I don't mark that up as something great. AJ Klein played great against Seattle. doesn't mean he's going to play great against Arizona. Right. Yep. Like I, I, I'm just not there uh, to say that they're anything but Jekyll and Hyde because Allen threw for 400 yards against Seattle. That's great. Um, the fact is they couldn't run the football even when they wanted to. Right. So mm-hmm. I, I just don't think the offense is completely there, but again, you've been playing, you've been playing carousel across that offensive line. I think that's probably the major reason why I'm most concerned is that everything is on Allen in this offense. A hundred percent on Allen because that offensive line is, is just pieced together at this point. Yeah. I mean, the main cog in there is Feliciano. If he goes down, I think this team's going to have a lot of trouble. But oh it, God! I need to sleep at night. Why would you say something like that? Just—I mean, he's not gonna go out tonight. I mean, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs>
But when you when you talk about Jekyll and Hyde and about this offense and about Allen, especially for his turnovers, that you're talking about mm-hmm. a third year player. I think anybody would take a third year player nine games into the season. He's only thrown five picks. Yeah. And if you think, I mean, I'm just, I'm just speaking not yeah. separate of the fumbles. I agree with you 110% about the fumbles, you know, tuck the ball in, get down. Do, I know you're a playmaker and you're limiting a lot of more times that you play hero ball now, mm-hmm. but my, probably the injury was a blessing in disguise to him because now he doesn't feel like he's invincible. So you're talking about a guy that has five picks. Now let's, let's just try to analyze that for one second. One went off of Andre Roberts hands mm-hmm. right into the, you know, and the other one, wasn't a pick. Remember, he, he threw it up, and then who did the Croft catch it? And then they said he ripped it. It got away ripped from. out. Yeah, yeah. Was, so yeah. you're talking about three legit picks that he's thrown in nine games. Mm-hmm. If you're telling me that Allen's going to throw one pick every three games, like legit ones, okay. Right. <laughs> I, I could I yeah. could stomach some of them fumbles after a while. You know what I mean? So, um, I mean that, that's that's just a point I, I think I want to bring up in the fact that this is a third year kid who. Came in completely raw into the league, and now mm-hmm. he's he's lighting up scoreboards left and right. He's throw for two four hundred yard games. I think he's the only guy in the only only player in the Super Bowl era. I think the stat was to throw for four hundred yards and have three plus touchdowns in the same season, mm-hmm. which is phenomenal. But yep. Um, that all being said, having that firepower in your back pocket, you could play with any team in the league, right? And the quarterbacks that are coming up against Josh Allen. They don't have that firepower, so I'm no. I'm more worried about the defense catching their legs going into the final games of the season. Because you know what, nobody might play that Miami game. Mm-hmm. Bills could conceivably be, you think, let's say they're twelve and three, and mm-hmm. they they're five and zero oh in their division, mm-hmm. and uh, which um, what you call it, Kansas City's already you know they end up finishing fourteen and two. Mm-hmm. Why would you even play anybody in that game? against Miami. Right. Yeah. It makes no sense. So. Yeah, I I get that, you know, but I mean, I'm still riding the 14. I unless I'm I'm drinking that Kool-Aid right now. I would go 12. Like, and give four. me all the Kool-Aid. I would go 12 and 4. I would go 12 and 4, 11 and 5 at the worst at this point. One thing I do want to bring up about Allen that I think is, you know, is is, is a nice nugget to end this whole conversation about right yeah. we talk about the bills and the quarterbacks they're going to be going against and i'm happy to see the bills attack R- russell wilson the way that they did because i think you're going to see similar things against these younger quarterbacks right you oh, want yeah. to get pressure in their face I-, I do think that you're going to see a lot more of this blitz moving forward because it's a great way to disrupt a young quarterback right josh allen before the seattle game has thrown 16 touchdown passes right mm-hmm. and five interceptions yes Against the Blitz this year, he's got nine touchdown passes and one interception. What does that tell you about Josh Allen? He's mature. Right? Yeah, exactly. Right, exactly. And that's something that defenses aren't going to be able to expose against the Buffalo Bills, that the Bills have the exact opposite advantage, right? Like they're going to be able to attack these young quarterbacks. And that's why I'm, I'm pretty convinced that as underwhelming, because we talked about this on other episodes, as underwhelming as this defense is, right? Yes. They got role players across the board. Um, just as long as injuries don't derail them, right? Just as long as they can make it through the Milano injury, just as long as Edmund stays r- relatively healthy, right? Just as long as they don't lose Trey, just as long as they don't lose Poyer and Hyde. And I know that's a lot of pieces out there, but when you have role players across the field, you can't have injuries. I- injuries have a bigger effect on your defense, but I think they're more malleable, right? To be able to go uh, and and do what you're asking them to do, given the situation. I, again, you know, I, I'm down for everything Buffalo is doing right now. Mm-hmm. Now I'm not sticking my foot in the ground saying Brian Dable's doing a great job. Not willing to go there. Don't appreciate uh, Josh Allen doing a, a quarterback keeper from the four yard line uh, when you're up 14 points to score a touchdown. Don't like that. Don't like, nope. Nope. Don't nope. like that. Don't like that. I, those are the risks that I dislike. But at the end of the day, they won by 10 points. You needed that touchdown. You did, right? So you did. yeah, and then, I get it. I think it's great. And we're about in hashtag nation. You know, you're going to hear about this from other outlets very, very soon after this episode's posted. Kyler Murray, second year. Justin Herbert, rookie. Who knows who the 49ers are going to play at that point. You could mm-hmm. face Mason Rudolph or Duck Hodges for, for mm-hmm. the Steelers. 
You got Drew Locke, what, first or second year? Second year. Um, you could have a Jared Stidham, you know, mm-hmm. playing for the Patriots. And then you got Tua, rookie. So, right. If you're Frazier and McDermott, you got to be salivating over the, some of the quarterbacks and some of the things you're going to be throwing at them. But remember, that is not a good litmus test going into the playoffs against more experienced quarterbacks. I'm right. just saying that's the only downfall. You're right. They could have a great. They could finish 14 and two, like Paul said, beating up on all these rookie and second year quarterbacks. But then when you face the Mahomeses, you know, when you have to face some of these big dogs, it may not be. It's not the good platform to the playoffs. You know, I mean, right. that's something I'm worried about. Love, I love that point, Mark. And people are going to be sitting at home going, "Where's the pressure? Where's the pressure?" Like, yep, mm, yep. Not doing that today. When you're playing, <laughs> yeah. When you're playing those those studs in the playoffs, it's going to be a little yeah. bit different story. That's the only thing right. I want to caution hashtag Nation about. But yeah, uh, great point. Drop in the comment section. Who would? How do you have the Buffalo Bills finishing? Are they uh, anywhere between? Don't say nine and seven. That's all I'm gonna say. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, drop drop that record in the comment section. I'd love to know what everybody thinks. Yep. 